Mais ne serait-ce pas l'heure d'une petite publicité fonce Le clou avec un portrait acéré de Nine Inch Nails, le groupe industriel glaçant qui, pour avoir eu l'idée de débouler sur scène couvert de boue à l'égal de son public, restera le symbole absolu de Woodstock 94. Train 13 Nord, le leader de Nine Inch Nails, récemment catapulté numéro 1 des charts américains avec le profondément anti-commercial The Downward Spiral, nous a parlé en exclusivité de l'enregistrement de l'album en question dans la maison où Sharon Tate et ses amis furent sauvagement assassinés par Charles Manson et ses amis, des pouvoirs de l'énergie négative, de Kurt Cobain et du suicide en général. Enjoy Negative energy motivates me to write music more so than um, feeling good about things. I started out as a, I was forced to take piano lessons and I got it when I was really young, so I was five, and studied for about 10 years at that. Started playing in bands as a keyboard player, bad bands from rural areas of America. Got a job working in the studio where I could get free time and uh, locked myself away for a year and kind of came up with the idea of Nine Inch Nails and wrote most of the first album. Pretty Hate Machine, got a record deal, um, put a band together after the record was done, and toured for two years, sold a million records in America. And that was weird, and that freaked me out, and I hid in the studio for two years and did the next two records, and now I'm venturing back out to uh, get myself nervous enough again that I'll hide away and do another 10 albums. <laughs> all based on my neuroses and my fears. Uh, I was just at a point in my life when I, I needed to make a record that was addressing some issues that were bothering me, and just in my head. And I came up with the idea of making a record that was kind of a concept type album. Um, and I knew it would be fairly depressing. It became more interesting from just a historical perspective, because it is American folklore. Um, but it wasn't the reason that we chose it. And I didn't intend that to be a big media. Look how spooky I am. I'm, I'm in the Sharon Tate house, and I'm creepy, and I'm, you know. Um, but it turned into that. I'm just so tired of even talking about it. That, you know, I'm, I'm ready to say yes, it is what I'm talking about. You know, I'm, I've lured people up and killed people myself. And... <laughs> To be on stage, it's a very immediate interaction with people, and to be yelling out my feelings and see people yelling it back at you can sometimes be, well, it is always a kind of cathartic um, release in some way. Literally the last two, three years, I haven't had any time off other than do a record every day, get the record done, and that's replaced by do a video or do a, get a tour together or hire a band or rehearse a band, figure out a live set, figure out a live stage show, figure out. There's always 10 more things in line. I mean, I can understand the pressure that uh, Cobain went through. I don't know him. I didn't know him. But uh, that can easily freak you out. 
I was thinking about it when I wrote those lyrics, yeah. I mean, I've thought about that. I, I'm not going to do it. I think you know, anybody can kill themselves. It's been done. And it's not the answer, it's a cop-out. So by putting that on the record was not saying, go do it, or I'm going to go do it. But I am saying, I have thought about it. And, um, you know, if you've thought about it, you're not the only person that's thought about it. And what I need to do right now is kind of step away from my life and take a look at it and say, you know, am I happy? Mm, not really. Why am I not happy? And figure out how to make myself um, do better. I can always stop. I don't have to do this. I don't have to do this interview. I don't have to be on tour. You know, it might cost me a career, but it's better than a life, you know, or your sanity. Which I have a little bit of left. Aujourd'hui, la prochaine fois, Rock Express se branche rap hardcore à mort avec les Beastie Boys, Biohazard et le Bonnie.